for the week of the final exam. Juan, Juan can you take your headphones out for about 10 minutes? Uh, I'm going to go through all this stuff just so you know where all the information is. Uh, this is similar to the test that we had um, back at the end of the first semester. So I'm going to run through it just so you know where uh, all the information is and you can get to, you can answer those quick questions as quickly as possible. We do have to have a second major grade. This test is going to be your second major grade and then you'll take your final exam if you're not exempt, uh, but it should be pretty close to this. So uh, let's go ahead and go through this real quick. Uh, the definition of line is pretty simple. Uh, remember the difference between a line and a shape is that the shape is enclosed and is flat. Uh, the form is things that are things that are three dimensional. Here's some examples of some forms. Uh, you need to know some of these names. Uh, texture is implied and it is also uh, actual or physical texture. So physical texture is like your clay pot. Implied texture is anything on a piece of paper and textures uh, is similar to the way something feels. So uh, here's the definition of space. Uh, here's the definition of value. Value can be the lightness and the darkness of a color. Remember, it can be a color or it can be white to dark. Caitlin, can you give me a minute? Thank you. Uh, here are some types of lines. Uh, here are some more lines. Uh, and then here, organic shapes. The two definitions for organic shapes or for shapes are organic and geometric. Organic are the ones that are free flowing. Geometric are the ones that are uh, pretty common and well known. So uh, as you can see, the organic shapes are kind of amoeba-like and geometric shapes are the ones that have names and we all kind of know what those are. Uh, Pablo Picasso was the founder of cubism. Here's his art piece called Guernica. And the blue period was created because uh, the death of his best friend and his sister. Uh, here are some terms that you all know, the primary colors, secondary colors, hue, intensity, all that good stuff. So uh, here's where you're gonna find a lot of your definitions. Remember primary colors are red, yellow, blue. Secondary colors are green, orange, and purple. Uh, you mix two primary colors to get a secondary color. And to get a, a tertiary color, you mix a primary color and a secondary color to make a tertiary color. Uh, complementary colors are straight across from each other. The only three relationships you need to know are right here, yellow to purple, blue to orange, and red to green. Uh, analogous colors are four colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Uh, here are the warm colors and the cool colors. Uh, and then it starts to go into what each color means. Uh, I have the term or definition that you'll need that will uh, help guide you to the overall idea of what each color is, um, such as you know, orange is uh, for enthusiast, uh, enthusiasm, blue is accepting, uh, red is for passion, yellow is for optimism and is energetic. So you, sh you should find the labels for each color in that section. Uh, contrast is the difference between dark and light. Uh, here's another example of for texture. Uh, we've already been over form. Uh, the definition for surrealism is an art movement, uh, an art movement created to explore the unconscious mind, such as dreams or dreamlike or a dreamlike nature. Uh, space is everything around an object. Uh, overlapping is when things are in front or behind each other. Uh, they also can go move up and at an angle um, whenever things are moving away from the viewer. Uh, so things are gonna be a little bit higher. As you can see, the ground underneath the horse is gonna be way below the picture. And then the ground in the background is a little bit higher. You can see it. Um, and it's also blurry. So things in the background are blurry. And let's skip to the last couple of slides. Uh, one point perspective is when everything leads down to one point. Uh, so here's an example of positive space and negative space. The positive space would be the man and the, and the boat. The negative space would be the space in the water uh, because it's everything around the, the object. Uh, here's an example of a tessellation. Here are all your definitions for the vanishing point or the one point perspective. Uh, vanishing point, vanishing lines, horizontal lines, and uh, I think that's all you'll need to know for that. Uh, here's another example for vanishing point. And remember the vanishing point doesn't have to be in the center of the art piece. It can be off to an angle or off to the side. Uh, 
We've already been over backgrounds. Remember, physical texture is anything that you can physically touch. Uh, implied texture is anything on a piece of paper. Here's a value scale. Uh, and here are examples of implied texture. Now, this last slide is about the principles of art. We are gonna talk about the principles of art when we come back after testing. Uh, Y'all gonna be testing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, we'll have class, but I want you guys to focus on your project. Uh, but we have already been over the, uh, the example for balance, but we still need to go over contrast, emphasis, movement, pattern, rhythm, and unity. So when we come back on Monday, we'll, we'll tackle another word every day. I'll talk briefly about it, give you some examples, and then we'll move on to the next word the, the, the day after that. So hopefully you get all the principles of art. Uh, you have all the elements of art. And as we go through the principles, I'll put the principles of art on the other side of the wall. And you guys will understand all 14 of those definitions. Now, what you guys are going to be working on for the rest of the day is uh, we're going to